Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you at the European Open here on a Monday, 20 April. Theme over the weekend. The theme here in Europe is everyone is sick of quarantine, fed up, uh, and ready to go back. Switzerland goes back next week. Germany opened small shops uh, today. Even Italy is just going to open, reopen the business. Um, this creates all kinds of risks, uh, as far as I can see, as far as new transmission. And, um, and it looks like basically the governments have just created some time for more preparation. Uh, and are looking for sort of herd immunity uh, towards the end of this. But of course, herd immunity, the idea of it kind of means that just a shitload more people are going to die. Um, so, I don't know. I'm, I'm glad that the uh, economies are reopening, and this is great for people at bike shops and, and hairdressers and, and uh, the like. Um, but for a population at, as a whole, uh, looks looks relatively grim um, to me. So we'll have to keep that in the back of our minds and watch to see what price does and what's vulnerable here. One of the uh, most interesting pieces of news that we just put on Twitter was Germany. <coughs> Germany's now going to sue um, China. 130 billion euros. Um, don't see that too often, right? One country suing another country. You see that maybe in wartime. Um, I can't remember the last time we saw this in peacetime. Uh, watch this space, right? We talked about it. The U.S. Uh, against China. Now Germany, which is far more important than France uh, in a geopolitical sense, is now on the attack. We know what Macron said about China and their duplicitous nature. Let's watch this because this is, um, this is really important geopolitically for the world. Uh, and does this set the table for perhaps uh, either economic or conventional war? I don't know, um, but that is definitely something that we're thinking about. Let's go to currencies, pretty quiet overnight, uh, kind of right where we left them. Euro's not doing much here, nothing really much to do. Uh, recent lows, 108.10 um, last week, 60 points away, kind of middle of this range. We're still on the... Uh, dollar sell bandwagon not much to do in euro not much to do in cable uh, our horse of course is dollar swiss and dollar norway um, neither of them have done too much so not really much to do the tactical book in dollar swiss you just want to sell high ones and try and collect them back in 30 or 40 points lower uh, the trend book just stays short here Dollar yen, uh, you saw FX macro uh, late Friday. Talk about how he thinks the market's very short, dollar yen. Um, this is a guy who knows quite a bit about the currency market, so give him his props, uh, give him his due. We still think the risk is down. Uh, this is not one of our horses just because of the GPIF who's lurking, uh, but just from a technical picture, this looks like it needs to go down. No point in trying to fade this here because, like I said, GPIF is lurking and all kinds of... There are lots of factors fucking with dollar yen these days. Just wait. Just wait for 107 to break and then see what happens. We saw the technical group at City put out the same recommendation. Um, sadly, we consider that a bit of a hex, um, but we'll see. You know, we're going to... We're going to try this trade uh, once we get down through 107, the figure. Until then, beware. There's pushing and pulling. 
smart guys are saying it's going to go up. Uh, smart guys are saying it's going to go down. Usually means it's not super clear. So just be careful in dollar yen. Euro yen, like dollar yen, we like it lower. Uh, we couldn't quite get through that 60 level uh, on Friday, 116.60. And so this is kind of the point where we'll be looking at. We do think this will be dollar yen driven versus euro driven. Um, and we do like 116.60 to break and then 116.33 to finally break. Could um, this be driven by some sort of salvo from China right back at Germany? Fists up, dukes up, ready for a fight? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I do know that we're in the middle of nowhere, 117.19, so just leave it alone for now. Sterling Yen, similar setups, 133.60 and 132.50. It looks like to me this has to trade. We're going to get this rounding top up here and then we're going to move down. What drives it? I don't know. Do you want to front run these levels? No. Um, wait for the levels to get within sight and then have a look around and see what's going on. It'll be pretty obvious uh, if, if the story jives with the price. Dollar Rand, don't really want to talk about it. Talking to an old Dutch dude um, who grew up in South Africa, now lives in Australia. He's a business school professor on, uh, over the weekend. Outlook confirmed. Grim. Things are going to be bad uh, in South Africa financially and bad for their currency for the foreseeable future. Aussie dollar, not really sure what to do. We like to sell it right in the middle of this range here. I guess if you did the fibs, you could you could say that the move from here to here, this is about 60%. Go ahead and do the fibs if you want, but it's kind of short term for our, our liking. Are we going to clear 64.43? I don't know. Um, you certainly can't sell here and leave a stop above here. The risk reward's upside down. Again, looks like not a whole lot to do. Euro Aussie. Uh, 171 now is a pivot. Uh, I'm sorry, 170.10 is a pivot. Um, we're not trading Euro Aussie. We are offering um, Aussie Yen at 70. That's something we are doing. It's 150 points away, but we got some lonely offers up top there. Uh, for a rainy day rally. Who knows what's going to drive it. Gold. Coming right into this sort of sweet spot we talked about, this 90.10. Can gold drop another 100 bucks? Of course it can. Um, the liquidity is just dire. People are long. Uh, should gold skyrocket to 5,000? Yes, it should. Um, when will it? I don't know. We've been kicked in the teeth with gold. It hasn't cost us much money, but it has cost us much emotional, sort of emotional capital. Um, we buy low ones and it would kind of work out, but then you get skanked a day later on some ridiculous move. We would buy high ones, but the vol would be too big. And you end up getting stopped out at break even. Tough one, this. Uh, you want to be long gold. There's no question in my mind about that. It's just a question of how the hell do you, or how the hell are you safe? How can you get safe? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Right now we're square gold. Um, yes, interesting um, bar. Didn't fill the cash gap, filled the futures gap uh, on Friday. Indecision, running right into what we think is very serious resistance. This last gap here, this last cash gap here, 29.68. 200 days up here as well, right around 3,000. Um, at 28.65, uh, we have tiny shorts on in the trend book. Tactically, we're square. Definitely want to sell bonds, but. We're just waiting. 
this looks like a nice technical point here, but there's only one person in the market buying bonds up here, and it's the Federal Reserve. Uh, and of course, they're the most important player. Should be some stops above 14 now. And the Fed flows should just plow through those a bit. Maybe this is the fade. 139.14, maybe to 139, 140.14. I don't know. Probably safer selling it down through 137.14. But you do want to get short U.S. fixed income long end stuff uh, eventually. Um, but an interesting now one, two, three, four, five, six tops now up there. So technically interesting. We are definitely not break trading this. We are not buyers of U.S. fixed income. Gold's a new contract. Um, so that's why it's at 2366. The old contract is sitting down there at like 17 still. Um, we had bids in at 1717 on Friday, didn't get done. Um, there was probably a buck profit if you did get done there, not a whole heck of a lot. Um, but we're on a new contract now. Gold still looks terrible. Um, this chart's not super useful as you can see. Contract change is massive, contango, whatever. Um, don't know what to do with this. Maybe you sit and wait down at 17 again. I, I, I don't even know. Gold sucks. Uh, finally, dollar Norway. Not doing too much, very much like dollar Swiss. You want to try and sell high ones. Eventually, this is going to break 10, 14. I don't know what's going to drive it. It's probably the dollar side. But don't count out the Norwegian side. Um, Euro Norway is, is still way well historically too high. If this moves back down to 1050, which is still historically very high, uh, dollar Norway goes another another 10% on its own. Um, and if the dollar turns also, uh, dollar Norway really is gonna is gonna rip. And uh, your target's 950, and then we'll just have to see. Anyway, not much to do actively at the open here. We were pretty much just watching this morning, um, keeping an eye on these dollar yen levels and these yen cross levels, but there's really no trade to do actively this morning. You want to sell high ones uh, in S&Ps, stretch highs, which can mean, you know, 50, 60, 70 handles. It's not a stretch high of 12 or 15 handles in this vault. So... Looks like it's a quiet Monday open for us. Wish you guys a good trading day. Talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.